Hi everybody, I'm Razvi. Welcome back to Poon 101 series. In this video, we are going to solve the seventh binary from the Poon 101 trihagmi room. Since this is the first video that involves several concepts we have previously discussed in the series, I'm going to tell you beforehand what we are about to do in this one. In this video, we are going to see and understand how to abuse a former string vulnerability so as to bypass the canaries on the stack and also the peak or pi protections that stands for position independent code or position independent executable we are going to see what a canary is what's its main purpose and how we can bypass it how we can leak its value and later use it to actually hijack the execution flow of the program and regarding position independent executable by the means of the format string vulnerability, we will leak an address of a function during execution and this will in turn allow us to discover the address of given functions which will ultimately get us to know the base address of the binary during execution. Knowing the dynamic base address of the binary allow us to hijack the execution flow and jump to whatever function we desire. Because remember that when a binary is compiled as a position independent one, the addresses of the text segment of the binary, that is where its code instructions are, change with every single execution. They get randomized. With every single execution, the addresses will be different. In fact, in order to be precise, not the full address will be randomized, but most of its bytes. And without further ado, let's get down to business. As always, I have already downloaded the binary, which we can see is a 64-bit executable, dynamically linked, and it isn't stripped. About its protections, we can see there are canaries present on the stack, which we are about to see what they are and how do they prevent, or at least pretend to prevent the hijacking of the execution flow. The non-executable bit is enabled. We cannot execute code on the stack, shellcode. And the position independent executable is also enabled. Okay, so now let us execute the binary to see what it actually does. You are a good trihagmi player, but yesterday you lost your streak. You mailed about this on trihagmi and they responded back with some questions. Answer those questions and get your streak back. What's your latest streak? Well, let us try a long input. As always, we try to see first how the program can be broken. Thanks, happy hacking. Your current streak is... And we can see that we got detected a smash, a stack smashing here. This is how canaries work. When they detect that a buffer has been overflown, they simply throw this error and the execution is terminated. Let us execute it once again. First, it prints whatever we say in the latest streak question and then it waits for input and does nothing with it. So let us try to see if there is a format string vulnerability somewhere, which as we can see, there is one of them. And then it waits for input once again. Stack smashing detected. Okay, so far we know that we can leak data because when it first requests for input, there is a format string vulnerability. And then when the second input is required, we just have to provide something that we are not quite sure right now. Let me try once again. Maybe there is also a form of string vulnerability with the second input and we can see there isn't. So the second input isn't printed back to the screen, to the standard output in this case. So with that being said, let us go ahead and disassemble the binary and maybe debug it to see what is going on in the assembly code. So let us first take a look at the main function. As always, a call to setup to banner, which isn't of our concern. We don't really care about them. Several prints. You are a good player, but yesterday, what's your last streak? Here is a call to read and the input is being saved in the format buffer. And a total of 14 bytes are being read in hexadecimal. Let me show it in decimal so we can actually understand. There are 20 bytes being read and this format buffer which is our data our input is being written into is saved at rbp minus 40 as we can see right here so there is no way for us to buffer overflow with this read call because we are writing only 20 bytes in rbp minus 40 so we cannot hijack the execution flow we can see then there is a printf this printf call right here is trying to print to the standard output the buffer itself whatever we write into it without any format string per se 
As we have seen in the previous video, this is a format string vulnerability. Here it is. This printf call is what will allow us to leak memory data. Then we have several outputs printing data to the standard output. And there is another read call, only this time read writes up to 200 in hexadecimal bytes. In decimal, this is 512. And this data is being written into buff. Let us take a look where buff is. And we can see it is at RBP-20. With this second read, we are indeed able to hijack the execution flow of the program because we are writing in RBP-20 up to 200 in hexadecimal bytes. Okay, let us take a look what else is happening here in main. And then after the vulnerable read call, there is a comparison between the canary itself and some data from the file segment. We don't really care about this memory address right here. And we can see that if the value isn't equal, there is a call to stack check fail. We can see it's being called from main function from a function called get streak, banner and setup as well. This function is being called whenever there is a canary check and the canary has been smashed. The stack has been smashed, overwritten in other words. And let us take a look at what is this quad word that is a 64 bits value at the position canary that the program is checking. We can see that the canary that is being checked lives at RBP minus eight. That is right under RBP. Now, before proceeding, let us make sure we all understand what a canary is. Why is it placed at RBP minus eight? And how does it pretend to avoid the execution flow hijacking? We will use this stack layout in order to understand it. As we have seen, the canary is placed at RBP-8, that is one memory cell right below RBP. Let's say that our RBP register is right here at this position, at this memory cell. So we have that RBP-8, which is this memory cell right here, is our canary. And what is the canary per se? Well, it is nothing else than just a big value, a big number, a big integer, which is randomly generated for every single execution, and it is placed at RBP-8 for every single function that is protected, that is checked before it actually returns. The checking of the canary, which happens at this very instruction, at this jump if equal, before calling the stack check fail function in case the values are not equal, we see it happens right before the function returns. In case the values that are being checked are equal, we follow this true branch of the jump if equal instruction and we execute the function's epilogue. So what is the logic behind all of this? Well, imagine for a moment that we have a buffer, let's say at this position, we don't care about its size, let it be 16 bytes, and we write into it by the means of a gets call. We all know by now that gets is a vulnerable function that should never be used. So, okay, we start writing data into this buffer. As we all know, writing into memory happens from lower addresses toward higher ones, just the contrary as the stack grows. We are writing in a 16 bytes long buffer, as many bytes as we want, and we aim at overwriting the return address of this function because we want to hijack the execution flow. As we all know, right above RBP, that is RBP plus eight, there lives the return address of the present function. So let's say we keep writing and in order to be able to overwrite the return address of this function, as well as the saved RBP, we have inevitably to overwrite the canary. Since the canary is a pretty big value, there is no way for us to know what is value unless we leak it somehow, of course. In other words, it can't be brute forced. So whenever we overwrite this value, before the function reaches its epilogue, it will check whether the value that is present in the canary position, that is RBP minus eight in our diagram, equals to whatever the original value of the canary is. 
since we have overwritten this position, it won't be equal, of course. So this jump, if equals right here, will follow its negative branch, its false branch, and we will execute the stack check fail function and the execution will be aborted, of course, printing the stack smashing detected. That is the main idea behind canaries. That's how canaries are intended to protect the hijacking of the execution flow. So how can we bypass canaries? Well, since this binary is vulnerable to format strings vulnerabilities, we will be able to leak the intended value of the canary. And when we are overflowing the buffer, when we reach the position, we will overflow the canary with its very same value. And from the perspective of the canary check in the assembly code, in the binary code, there will be no difference. So the jump if equal instruction will indeed follow the true branch. Okay, so now that we know what a canary is and what's its main purpose, and most importantly, how to bypass it, let us recap for a moment. We know that we have a first call to read, which becomes a format string vulnerability because there is a call to print f, which prints whatever we write without a format string itself. Then we have a second call to read, and it writes up to 512 bytes into the buff buffer, which is located at rbp-20. In other words, we have a buffer overflow, and we know how to leak the canary that prevents us from hijacking the execution flow of this program. Now we want to know where do we want to hijack the execution flow? Well, if we take a look at the functions this binary has, there is a function called getStrick. If we take a look at it, it calls to system with bsh as a parameter. In other words, this is the function that we want to execute. This is our win function. So given that this is a position independent executable, these addresses we see right here will change with every single execution. We cannot just overwrite the buffer and place 94C in the return address of main because it won't work. Addresses will be different with every single execution. What we are seeing here while disassembling or debugging this binary are their offsets. And we have to stay clear to make sure we understand that offsets do not change with executions. If we go to the base address of the binary, which is this function right here, given that this is a position independent executable, its base address is zero. As you can see, this function starts at zero. This is the very start of our binary. The offsets will remain the same between every single execution. Offsets, of course, relatives to the base address. In other words, let's say our function getStrick is at offset 94C relative to, of course, the binary's base address, which in this case is zero. So that is precisely why we need to know the base address during execution, what I usually call the dynamic base address. Because if somehow we manage to leak the dynamic address of any given function during the execution, we will be able to get the dynamic base address of the binary. And from that point on, we of course will be able to get to calculate the dynamic address of the getStrick function. Now the question is, how do we manage to leak any address from the binary during its execution? Well, remember that there is a format string vulnerability and these kind of vulnerabilities allow us to leak data from the stack. So we have to debug the binary and see what is there on the stack during the execution with the hope that we will find at some place a pointer or an address from the binary that we can leak. So let us go ahead and debug the binary. We could debug it using cutter, of course, but I prefer using radar for that matter. A little comment before proceeding, what we are about to see here heavily relies on the assumption that you already know what a format string vulnerability is and how we can abuse it. In case you don't, let me recommend you the previous video in the series where we discussed in depth why and how format string vulnerabilities happen and how we can abuse it. I pretty much recommend you this video if you aren't familiar with format strings vulnerabilities or if you feel like you don't fully understand what's going on. Okay, so now let us go and debug and see what's there on the stack. First, we have to print our main function. And in the main function, we have seen that the vulnerability happens with this printf function right here. So let us place a breakpoint right there. 
and one more breakpoint right after it so we can actually see what it is printing let us execute the binary and it will first ask for input let us provide something random and we have reached the breakpoint i will print the stack and we can see that rsp is of course pointing to the input i just provided and we have our rbp right here there are several things we really do care about in this stack. First of all, if this is our RBP, RBP minus eight is the canary. That means that this position right here is the canary. This is, for example, the value that we have to leak. And when we are overwriting, that is writing in this direction, when we reach this position, we have to overwrite it with this very same value. For every single execution, the value will be different. Please bear in mind that Radare prints the stack upside down. That is, on the top of the screen we have the lower addresses and here we have the higher addresses. Okay, so this is our canary, we could leak this value and then we need a value that points back to our binary in order for us to get its dynamic base address. We could of course think about the return address of the main function which is always at rbp plus 8, which is this value right here. But we have a small problem. Let us take a look at this address, which is the return address of the main function, which is 7f82be. As we can see, all that range of addresses belong to GNU's libc. In other words, will not return to the binary itself. It will return to GNU's libc. We want to leak an address from the very binary, not from GNU's libc, which is dynamically linked because that's what invokes the main, that's what calls the main in the first place. So we don't care about the return address of main, which is rbp plus a. However, what we may notice here is that we have here several addresses that do indeed point back to the binary itself. For example, this is an address from the libc csu init function, which regardless of it starting with the libc word, it is a function from the binary itself. In fact, let us take a look at this very address. As we can see, this address does indeed correspond with the start of CSU init function. Let me print once again the memory map for this process. We can see this address is in the range of 5603. And the 5603 range, which are all of these addresses, we can see they all correspond to the binary itself. First of all, since there are many addresses that point back to our binary, we have to first make sure that at least one of them will remain there between executions. In other words, what happens if the input we provide is longer? Well, let us repeat the execution and provide a longer input and see what is the layout for the stack. Let me provide some more things. Okay, we have hit the breakpoint. We are right where the vulnerability happens and let us print once again this stack. Notice how this time when I provided a longer input, it exhausted the 20 bytes the read function is actually reading. These are 8, 16, plus 4 bytes we have here, sums up for a total of 20 bytes. This is the maximum input we will actually be writing into the stack with this first call to read. Notice how this address from the binary is still there on the stack. But if we compare this stack layout with our previous execution, where I inserted a smaller input, notice how this address right here disappeared. It got overwritten. That's why we care about the address that will be there between executions, regardless of how long our input is. And it appears that we found it. This address right here, at this position, points back to our CSU init function, which belongs to the binary, so we could leak this value right here with our format string vulnerability, and we can leak at the same time the canary as well, because we have enough room in 20 bytes to provide both format string specifiers to leak this value right here, which is the address we care about, and this one right here, which is the canary itself. Okay, so now that we have identified the values we want to leak, because these are the values that will allow us to successfully exploit the binary, we have to know at what position are they from the format string vulnerability perspective, from the printf function perspective rather, in order to actually leak them. 
we don't know yet at what position our input is but we do know at what position the address and the canary are from our input in other words this is position zero where our input is being written and we have to count the memory cells since we are on a 64-bit architecture each memory cell is eight bytes so this is position zero position one two three this is the address we care about which is at position three from our input from the beginning of our input and then we have four five six and seven this is the canary itself which is at the seventh position from the beginning of our input since this information is pretty useful let me write it down okay so this is what we care about the address of our function is at the position of the input plus three and the canary is at the position of the input plus seven as we have seen from our stack layout. Now, the only thing that remains for us to know is, of course, the position of our input from the printf perspective. There are several ways of finding out where the input is from the printf perspective, and I will show you how I usually do it. For me, the easier way of doing so is executing the actual binary. First, I provide a recognizable sequence of bytes that are easy to identify when they got printed, and then I simply divide the input by the means of dots. And then I, of course, repeat the format specifier that I'm using to print the data from the stack. Remember that with each format specifier, the internal pointer of the printf function advances one position, it goes forward one memory cell, and I'm using the L subspecifier, length subspecifier, because I want to print full 8 bytes number by default, the X format specifier prints integers in hexadecimal format. If you don't understand what I'm doing here, please refer to the video I previously mentioned. Now let us execute it. We have reached the end of the binary, but we didn't get the result we wanted to. That means the printf function did not reach our input. Let us count how many memory cells we leaked here. That is one. Remember, we always start at one. That is one, two, three and four so we have to keep printing from there from the fourth position i execute once again the binary i provide an easy to identify string and then we start printing from the next position since we have printed one two three four positions and our input isn't in any of them we have to keep printing until we reach our input in this case we are printing the fifth position the sixth position and so on let us see if this time we manage to identify our input if we don't we have to keep printing from the eighth position and so on okay notice how the last format identifier didn't get interpreted by the printf function because read only reads 20 bytes which happens to be just all of this however this time we did manage to get our input notice what we have here 44 43 42 41 that is 44 43 42 41 these are the hex ascii values for a b c d uppercase this value right here corresponds to the fifth position and this value right here which happens to be our input corresponds to the sixth position so now we are sure that from the printf perspective our input is at the sixth position that being said we can now be sure that the address we want to leak is at the input position plus three which happens to be nine and the canary is at the input position plus seven which happens to be 13. So all of this knowledge we have gained so far translates into the following payload. This is what we have to provide the first read with in order for it to get interpreted by the printf and we are exploiting the format string vulnerability. With this first payload, with this first format specifier, we are leaking the address of the libc csu function and with this second format specifier we are leaking the canary we will then have to parse them and somehow use them to ultimately reach the get function doing execution 
Now, before proceeding and elucidate what we have to do with these values, let us first try them. We have to make sure we are leaking the values we pretend to leak indeed. I am debugging once again our binary with Radar 2 and I have placed the breakpoints. Let us execute the binary and when it asks for input we provide our payload we have just discussed. When it reaches the breakpoint we print our stack so we know what we have to print, what we expect it to print. And in this case it is this address right here and the canary which is rbp-8, this one right here, these two values. We execute once again to see what we got printed and let us take a look. We said that we wanted this address 558F800A90. Here we have it, just like so. And then the canary itself, which is dbd1, dbd1, FE00, FE00. So our payload is correct. I deduced the position of the canary by hand counting positions from the stack. You could instead just think about what this position is, which is rbp-40, which is where format lives, that is where read writes our input, and it is later printed by the printf function, the vulnerable one. If you manage to know the position of our input, which is the sixth position, and you know that it is rbp-40, and knowing that the canary is rbp-8, you can simply get the difference, the distance between these two positions by the means of calculating, for example, let's say in hexadecimal, we have rbp-40, and from rbp-40 to rbp-8, there are 38 in hexadecimal bytes of difference. And if we divide it by 8, which is the number of bytes a memory cell comprises in 64 bits, we get the number of memory cells we have from our input to the canary position, which is 7. So now the next step is, of course, writing the exploit. Let us take a look what is happening in this exploit. As always, I am using the PoonTools library and I am declaring a variable called binary, which contains the binary itself. I am using in this case checksec equals false because I don't want checksec to be executed every single time I am testing the exploit. I am getting the static address of the libc csu init function. I want to know its offset from the base address of the binary. Then I am executing the process. I am receiving bytes until it requests for input for the first time. Then I provide the payload and I am once again receiving bytes until it matches this trick colon. Then I receive the data we are leaking. I am splitting by the new line character because after the numbers we are leaking there is garbage. We don't really care about it. And then I split the remaining of the data by the means of the dot. We have in the first position the dynamic libc address and in the second position we have the canary of course. And please notice that I am parsing the leaked byte sequence as an integer for hexadecimal. Because we want to work with integers since we will later need to swap their endianess and pad whatever it is needed for 64 bits. If I execute this binary, this exploit, sorry, you can see that we are indeed successfully leaking the dynamic libc address and the canary itself. So what must we do now in order to finally exploit the binary? We have to get the dynamic base address of the binary. So in order to get the dynamic base address of the binary, we have to subtract from the leaked value the static address of the function. Take a look at this function right here for a moment. As we can see, libc csu init is at address a90. And if we subtract from this address right here, its offset, which is a90, we get zero, which is indeed the base address of the binary. In this case, because we are statically analyzing it and we didn't run it, so the base address is zero. But if we do just the same with the dynamic address, if we subtract from this dynamic address of libccsu init its offset, we get the dynamic base address of the binary. Once we have this number during execution, we will be able to get the get strict function address during execution, its dynamic address. And that's what we are about to do. 
Doing so with Poom tools is pretty easy. We just have to subtract from the leaked address, the dynamic leaked address, its static value. The result of the operation will be the dynamic base address of the binary, and then we must simply change the address of the binary itself by using binary.address. Please notice that binary is the binary we are loading with Poom tools, and we can modify its base address using that address. By assigning the dynamic base address we just calculated, from now on, every single reference we do to binary will be starting at the address we just specified which correspond to its dynamic address during execution. And now let us think how we can exploit the binary by abusing the second call to read in the main function. So remember that this second call here writes up to 512 bytes, writing them from the buff address. Let us take a look what is buff and it is rbp-20. So we will start writing at rbp-20. When we reach rbp-8, we place the value of the canary and then we keep overwriting as always. 8 more bytes to overwrite rbp and then the return address will be overwritten with the dynamic address of the getStreak function. So now bear in mind that the write happens at rbp-20 and our canary is at rbp-8. This leaves us with a difference of 18 in hexadecimal bytes. That means that from rbp-20 in hexadecimal we have to write 18 bytes until we reach the position of the canary. Then we write the canary itself and remember we are using pack for 64 bits function from Poon Tools because we want to swap the NDNS of this value and pad it with zeros whenever it's needed. Then we write 8 more bytes to overwrite RBP itself and then we place the dynamic get streak address that we computed from leaking the dynamic base address of the binary. Since we modified the address of the binary variable itself, we get the get streak address function based on the dynamic base address we just provided. And we also pack it for 64 bits because we want to swap its NDNS and pad with zeros whenever it's needed. There is one last thing for us to do here, which is providing this payload with a red gadget right before hijacking its execution flow. Remember the remote machine on the Trihagmi platform is running Ubuntu 18, which gives uh, problems with stack alignment. In order to do so, we declare our variable using the wrap module from Poon Tools. In this case, I simply want a red gadget and I am retrieving the first of them because bear in mind that there could be any number of red instructions. And I am placing it right before the address I want to jump to. Now let us test this exploit and see if it actually works, which it does. Let us now change the exploit to exploit the binary remotely, not locally, and get the flag. In order to test the exploit remotely, instead of using the process function, I'm using remote, providing a given IP and port where the exploit must connect to. On the other side of the connection, of course, in the server, the binary will be running Ritas. After several attempts, I finally managed to connect to the server, only this time the problem is that the server is sending different messages or with different uh, line configurations that uh, the binary is doing locally. The problem is that whenever this line is executed, whenever the int function is trying to parse output that split whatever as a hexadecimal number, it turns out that output is empty. And my guess is that here I have to retrieve maybe the second result after splitting with the line separator. Index out of range, so I have to debug this to see where the problem is. In order to debug the binary remotely, what I usually do is setting the log level of the context of this exploit we have right here to debug, so I can see how many bytes I am receiving and how many bytes I am sending. This way, I can notice that after I send the payload for the format string vulnerability, I am receiving these bytes and nothing else. Then, of course, when the output is trying to be splitted, there is nothing to split. So I assume I must place another receive call here. After receiving streak and colon, 
I must receive another stream of bytes just in case something is missing with the server. Let's try it. And I am receiving the dynamic base address as zero and the canary as any other value. So in any case, regardless of the error I am seeing here, something is wrong with the exploit. While this value being leaked at the position of the canary does indeed seem to be correct, it appears to be a random value, which is exactly what a canary is, the dynamic address isn't being leaked. This behavior is quite common because sometimes the offsets you have locally do not correspond to the offset you have remotely. They are being misplaced by some small value. Maybe you have to leak one position higher or one position lower. In this case, in order to find out what we have to do is executing the binary remotely and when we are asked about our input in this case instead of providing the ninth position for the dynamic address of the function we maybe provide the tenth position let us try to find out how do we know if this will be correct well because we know the offset of the function remember the lower nibbles of the address of the function won't change so we are expecting an address ending in a90 and here we have it as you can see this ends in a90 so we can right now at this point assume these are the correct values so we have to try our exploit so we have here our local payload and our remote payload since we are executing it remotely let us go ahead and try it let me clean the screen first and appears that we got our shell right here well, we have our flag line here which we can read and try to see if it is correct and it is and this was poon 107 in this video we have seen how we managed to bypass both stack canaries and position independent executable protections by the means of abusing a format string vulnerability in order to leak the canaries present on the stack and also pointers to functions from our binary that are being placed on the stack. By leaking these pointers to functions from our binary, we are able to get to calculate the dynamic base address of the binary, that is its base address during execution, and this way bypassing the position independent executable. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If there is anything you want to say, leave a comment below and remember, Exploit code, not people. See you in the next one. Until then, GG.